Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here with a great little book on the King James Version of the Bible by David S. Norton. Now, this, he does not agree, um, in my understandings of biblical inspiration, biblical preservation. But a book like this, what I'll use it for is I get just a lot of different history out of it. Now, sometimes a book like this, I'm not saying this book in particular, they'll make some false statements that I appreciate people like um, the head of Bible for today, who's got two doctorates, you know, one in language and one in theology, that they'll just go and they'll be like, no, let's correct this, or a David Cloud that dedicates far more time to this than I do. But David Norton, he is kind of taking taken the King James Version and tried through Boyce's notes that you know, they made 40 copies at least of Bishop's Bibles that were ruled and that were kind of like wide margin. And this is what the King James loosely, and this is what the King James translators kind of translated, made notes out of. And he's he's gotten a hold of one of those. There, it's it's available to look at. It may be online now. I don't know. Um, I know translating by for King James by Ward. Um, out of Auburn University, you know, he goes into that as well. And so it's tried to, to say, okay, here's what the King James Version with all of when it was originally came out, you know, the tedious typesetting and stuff. And people realized there were, there were some typesetting errors and everything in there that here's what they were trying to communicate. And he's gone back and tried to get all their, their notes and all of this kind of stuff. And that's where the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible comes from is from David Norton. So it's a short history of uh, of the Bible from Tyndale to today. The King James Bible, short history, Tyndale to today. I'm just going to read a couple things I found kind of interesting in here, and I do appreciate the amount of work that he does. He's based out of New Zealand. All right, so. Alexander Geddes prospects for a new translation of the Holy Bible in 1786. It claimed that to reform the text of the Bible would have appeared to the ignorant little less than a change of a national religion. And so, you know, all basically through the 19th century, most people just readily accepted the King James Version of the Bible in English-speaking world as the Word of God. It was 100% right. It was basically without error. There were some scholarly objections to that. Okay, so it says, insofar as one can locate this large change in the reputation of the KJB, it belongs to the 1760s. It was in this decade that Swift's observation, this is Gulliver Travels' Jonathan Swift, that the Bible and the prayer book have proved a kind of standard for language, especially to the common people, turned into a general, frequently repeated rule. So Robert Lowe's short introduction to English grammar in 1772, excuse me, 1762, began this by observing that the vulgar translation of the Bible, the King James Bible, is the best standard of our language, page 89. The general change in taste was nearly portrayed by Oliver Goldsmith in 1766, the vicar of Wakefield. An actor tells the aging vicar, Dryden and Rose Manor, sir, are quite out of fashion, out of uh Taste has gone back a whole century. Fletcher, Ben Johnson, and all the plays of Shakespeare are the only things that go down. The vicar's puzzled response articulates the passing age. How, cried I, is it possible the present age can be pleased with the antiquated dialect, that obsolete humor, that overcharged characters which abound in the works you mentioned? All right. It was the decade when love for Shakespeare became idolatry. So, uh, anyhow, fascinating things written in here. Let me read you some of the chapter headings so you'll kind of know what you're getting into. This was written probably when? 2011. Now, I've done a review. He's done a much larger book, but it's more focused on the orthography and the paleography of the King James Version of the Bible. This is more of a general thing here. All right. 
predecessors, original tax, text, the first draft, William Tyndale, revision, completion, the first draft of more revision, Miles Coverdale, the first authorized version, the Great Bible, Geneva, the People's Bible, the second authorized version, the Bishop's Bible, the Reims New Testament, drafting the King James Bible, Joseph and Mary, the fall, I was a translator working on the King James Bible, the setting, the chronology, manuscript work and notes, 1611, the first editions, uh, on and on and so forth. Reputation and future, printing, editing. And so back in 2011, you kind of had this 400 year anniversary, the quaternity of the writing of the King James Version of the Bible. And a lot of, of uh, praise came toward the King James Version of the Bible. Now you've got the Bible Museum up in Washington, D.C. That is an amazing testament to Scripture. So the King James Version of the Bible, I mean, look, it gave us the Constitution, it gave us the Declaration of Independence, it freed the slaves, it gave suffrage to, to women, it has done so much good, it gave the most prosperous country in the history of humanity, the kindest, gentlest country. It wasn't a perfect country. You can either think of the negatives or the overwhelming positives of, of the United States. It did all of this and gave high forms of morality, respect for, for people. And people can always say, well, what about the robber barons? What about Rockefeller? Blah, blah. Well, but look at what the overwhelming majority was. Till we get to the millennium, till we get to heaven, we're going to have some imperfections, okay? And so it gave us the greatest form of government that you could have. And uh, it gets you to heaven, too. And, it, and not just government, self-government, which is the best kind of government, and also the relationships between people, how to be a godly neighbor, how to have a neighborhood where you don't have to lock your doors, where violence isn't happening, and murders, and killings, and drugs, and alcohol, and on and on and so forth. So uh, people you know, work hard, and people take care of those that are less fortunate. And just wonderful. So anyhow, the King James Bible, David Norton, again, I would disagree with some of the things, but I use this as you get a lot of information out of it. As a matter of fact, Ward S. Allen actually wrote a blurb on here. And uh, so God bless. I'll talk with you later. Just live for Jesus Christ. Amen. Read that word.